Hi, I'm going to try to show you in this video today how to set up your Verizon Fios internet and TV without having to use their router. Um, as you know, they charge you a lot of money for this router, either to purchase it or monthly rental. Um, plus, having your own router gives you a lot of other advantages, better Wi-Fi speed and other things. Um, this video, first off, I, I am not a network engineer, I'm not an expert, I'm actually an insurance agent, but uh, I was able to get this to work, so hopefully this video will help some of you trying to do the same thing. Um, this video is designed for people who have some basic knowledge of routers, how to log into routers, you know, how to connect coax, ethernet, and things like that. Um, so hopefully this helps. Um, in my case, I have the brand new G3100 router. Um, but I'm pretty sure this technique will work pretty much regardless of what model router you're on with Verizon. Okay, so first what I'm going to show you is the basic way Verizon has you set up uh, their system for both the internet and the TV. Um, so starting at the ONT, uh, which is the optical network terminal, which is on typically on the side of your house, possibly in your basement, um, that has two outputs. It has a coax output and it has an ethernet output. Uh, you will likely need, if you don't already have it set up this way, you will need to call Verizon and make sure they connect your internet output to the ethernet. Um, if you have an older system with speeds below like about 100 megabytes, um, you might have the internet and TV both going through the coax. Uh, for this to work, you do have to have the internet coming out of the Ethernet connection and the ONT. Um, and if you call Verizon, they'll switch that for you. Um, if you have their gigabyte eth uh, Internet as I do, it's already going to be coming out of your Ethernet. So this is how they have you set it up. They have the Ethernet wire going directly from the ONT to the WAN port on the Fios router. Um, then they have a coax wire coming out of the ONT going to a splitter with then a wire going from the splitter directly to the Fios router and the other output of that splitter goes to all of your other TVs. Normally you would have another sp splitter maybe in your basement, maybe in your attic. Um, that splitter then takes that coax signal which has your video or your TV signal and it also now from the router has been injected via Mocha the internet signal. So now both the internet and the TV signal is coming to this splitter and then from here it's simply going via coax to your set-top boxes and then via HDMI to your TV. So this is how if you've already got your system set up this is how it'll be set up. There could be some slight variations in your setup for example they might have this coax wire from the ONT going straight to a splitter um, and then a wire from the router also going to the splitter. So, you know, let me just draw that real quick. So they might have this wire here going to the splitter and then this wire here also going to the splitter um, and then doing away with, you know, this here. So that's another way you might see it set up, um, like that. Um, so you might have one splitter, again, in the basement, maybe in the attic. The ONT would go, the coax from the ONT would go to that splitter, and then one of that splitter outputs would go back to your router. Again, that's where it picks up its internet signal and then out to all the TVs. So either setup will work. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to wire this up without using the Fios router and using your own router. Um, and after I show you this diagram, I'll actually go show you the actual connections and all the various components. Um, so, again, we have our ONT on the side of your house, typically. You're going to have that Ethernet wire go to the WAN or Internet port on your router, you know, your net gear, whatever kind of router you might have. Um, then you have the same coax coming out of that ONT, going to the same splitter, 
And really all you're doing is you're going to have to buy what's called a mocha adapter, which uh, I will show you, um, you know, later on. Um, I use the Motorola mocha adapter. I'll, I'll probably put the description of these items in, or in, in the description. Um, so you got your coax wire coming out of this splitter, which goes to the coax port on the mocha adapter. Now, what the Mocha adapter is doing is it's going to feed the internet signal back into your coax network. And the way it does that is simply by connecting a CAT6 wire or an Ethernet wire from any of your LAN ports on your router. So this is just one of the, typically they have four LAN ports. This is one of the LAN ports. Just run a wire from that. And if you're using the Motorola device, it has both a network and a device port you got to connect it to the network port on the Motorola adapter. Um, and then literally everything else is the same. So, you know, the wire coming out of the splitter goes to the other, uh, you know, the second splitter going off to all of your TVs. So really, to actually set this up, once you have it set up correctly, literally all you have to do is unplug this Fios router, take the coax wire that's connected to it, plug it into your Mocha adapter, and then all you need to do is unplug the Ethernet wire out of the, you know, again, so you got the Ethernet wire right here on the WAN port on the back of your Fios router. You're going to unplug that, and you're going to put it into the WAN port on your own router, and then you're just going to add this little Cat6 cable from your LAN port, port of your router to the network port of the Mocha adapter. Um, reset, you know, power cycle all of your set-top boxes. Um, make sure you power cycle your main DVR box first um, and then all of these others. Um, but once you do that, you should have full functionality. You should be able to watch Netflix. You should have a guide, deep, you know, all of the internet features of your TV should be working because they're all going to be picking up a coax, they're all going to be picking up the internet signal from this Mocha adapter. Um, so now I'm going to go show you on the actual equipment how all this is hooked up. Okay, so I'm on the outside of my house. Uh, sorry for the lighting, it's nighttime right now. Um, but this is what the ONT box looks like, uh, which again, this could also be in your basement. Um, and on this, we've got a Ethernet port here and the coax port here. Um, so these two wires right here are currently running uh, directly to um, my router inside, uh, which I will now go show you uh, where those are hooked up. All right, so the coax wire that I just showed you from the ONT and as I showed you in the diagram comes right here to the input of this splitter. And then the one output here is going to go to my splitter in another room that goes to all of my set-top boxes. The other wire here is the one that originally went to the coax port on the Fios router. But I've disconnected it from there, and I have plugged it into the, I don't know if you can read that, but it is the network coax plug. And this is my Motorola uh, adapter. Again, I'll, I'll leave the part number in the description. Um, and then the, and as I showed you, this wire here, this Ethernet, this blue wire, is connected to one of the LAN ports on my Netgear router, uh, which I'll now show you. So originally, with the way Fios has it set up, that Ethernet wire from the ONT went right here to the WAN port on their router. All I've done is taken that wire, and I have plugged that wire right here, it's the white wire, going to the Internet port on my Netgear router. Um, and then here's that blue wire on one of the LAN ports that is going back to that Mocha adapter. And 
so now what's happening is, and I really didn't have to do any special setup to my Netgear router. I mean, if you, you know, I mean, I'm not going to do a whole video on that, but basically if you just have your router set up in the traditional fashion where it's acting as the DHCP, um, assigning IP addresses to all your devices, um, and picking, it should automatically pick up the internet signal. Um, so there really shouldn't be any anything complicated here. Um, but this is sending the internet back to that Mocha adapter, which is putting it into your coax network. Um, so now I'll go show you my splitter going off to my TVs. Okay, so most of you probably have your splitter either somewhere in the basement or possibly up in your attic. Um, my setup is a little different. I have kind of all the wires, the coax wires from the other TVs in my house meet in my basement in the back of my TV here. And so here's where I have the splitter. So I have the wire right here, which is coming off the splitter from the ONT. So this coax comes from the ONT, goes to the splitter, the two-way splitter, with one end going to the Mocha adapter. The other end is this, which comes into my splitter here, and then these wires go to the various set-top boxes. So this goes, you know, to my office, this goes to the TV here, and this goes to a TV upstairs. So now if you go to any of the TVs and you go to the menu and you go to settings and then to system information, you can see right here that it has been assigned an IP address uh, via Mocha, which in this case is 192.168.1.101. Um, so each of the set-top boxes has been assigned an IP address from my Netgear router. Um, and, and so that is how, you know, I am getting the internet signal to my TV. Um, so as you can see, the guide works. You know, if, if I go back to the guide, you know, this all works. Um, DVR works. Uh, I'm sorry, not DVR, but on demand. Um, and, uh, you know, I can, you know, watch on demand movies. Um, and, you know, Netflix also works. Um, although I don't think I've logged into Netflix. Oh, I have here. Um, so Netflix, you know, also works. Um, so next, I'm, I'm going to take you back to my whiteboard and, and, and talk about some of the, you know, issues you might have and, and hopefully some things to fix them. So a, a couple of things that may potentially cause problems. First off, I did actually completely wire my system up using the Fios router to activate all my brand new set-top boxes. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. I'm actually going to be setting up one in my sister's next week. Um, and I'm actually going to try setting it up without even using their router, just setting it up this way, just going straight to my router into the Mocha adapter. Um, I'm not sure if when you very first set it up this way, if the set-top boxes will be able to activate without being connected to the Fios router. So I am going to find that out next week, and, and I'll post that, you know, comment whether that worked or not. But the way I had set mine up, was I did first connect the Fios router. So if you've already got your system set up, this should be really simple for you because what happens is the Fios router will activate all these set-top boxes and will assign IP addresses to each of them. And that is where I did run into a problem that had me stumped for a while. And, and I'll explain this just in case it happens to any of you all. So my Fios router had assigned to one of my set-top boxes the address of 192.168.105. And the problem was I had previously set up on my Netgear router an address reservation of .105 for a printer, for a network printer. So when I connected this set-top box and it tried to connect at that IP address, it wasn't connecting because my router was already reserving that address for my printer. Um, 
So what I did was, when I set it up on my FiOS router, I, rent, I went and I wrote down what all the IP addresses were for all of my TVs. Um, once I had those written down, and I showed you earlier how to get that through th settings and then system information, um, I then, once I hooked everything up to my router, logged into my router, and went to under LAN, and usually, depending on your router, it's probably under like DHCP settings or under LAN, but usually you have an option to what's called set an address reservation. And so what I'm doing is I corrected this where it was set to my printer, and I told it, make this address reservation for this set top box, and you know, dot one oh two or whatever for this one and dot one oh one for that one. And so I made these reservations on my router so that it would always know that dot one oh five is this TV, is this set top box. Um, so that's just one thing to, to look out for in case you run into that problem like I did. Um, a couple other things that could cause problems is your splitters. Um, it's very important to use high quality Mocha um, splitters which are bi-directional because this signal is going both directions here. You know, their signal is going back to the ONT, you know, from the router back through. Um, so you want to make sure you're using uh, bi-directional splitters um, and preferably ones that actually say they're Mocha compatible. Um, the other thing I recommend is try to do what's called home run wiring. Home run, home run wiring simply means that a wire goes from say this splitter directly to this splitter. Meaning it's not cut or split again. Um, I mean if you have to you can. I mean for example let's say you had six TVs. You had more TVs. You could you know run um, uh, you could make this here a three-way splitter and and you could run a wire off it to another splitter and then that could go to three more TVs um, you know if you had six TVs so you, you can split it multiple times but my only point is the less you split it the better so Instead of doing something like this, you would be better doing kind of this home run system here of putting one splitter, you know, and maybe getting, you know, one bigger splitter with multiple connections and having everything go right to it. So have your ONT go directly to it, have a wire from it directly to your router, and then a wire from it directly to all your set top boxes. What we're trying to do is simply try to limit all of the times, even the wall outlets. You know, every, every time you add a connection, you, you lessen the signal. So ideally, um, like what I try to do is, depending on the room and where it is, I try not to actually put a wall outlet. I just put a wall outlet that has like one of those noses on it, and then I literally just run the wire straight through it, and then straight to my set-top box. So again, there's no extra connections, and again, try not to use like one short wire and then put like a barrel connector in the middle and then another wire. Because again, when you do this, you're decreasing your signal. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I hope this helps. Um, uh, I, I definitely think there's a lot of advantages of running your own router. Um, you know, not that the Fios router is bad, but it's certainly not as good as some of the routers you can buy in the aftermarket. Uh, especially in the terms of Wi-Fi speed, Wi-Fi range, ability to speak to multiple devices at once, and then advanced features like I have an IP phone that requires a certain setting um, for it to work correctly that the FiOS router, you know, and other routers like that don't always let you do. Um, plus, of course, you, you save the fifteen dollars a month. Um, so I definitely think it, it, it's something that's worthwhile. Uh, the Mocha adapter. Um, for Motorola, I think costs sixty, seventy dollars. Um, I think Action Tech sells one that's like twenty some dollars. I haven't used it, but I hear it works too. Um, 
So anyway, uh, I really hope this helps. Um, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so uh, I, I don't need anybody to subscribe or like. And if you don't like it, uh, you got what you paid for. Thanks.